In case you miss it, here's a sports animal rewind. USC Upstate head coach Eddie Payne. Coach Vince Ferrara and Ben Fredrickson here in Knoxville. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing this morning, Coach? I'm good. Thank you, Vince. Appreciate it. Well, let's start out since we were talking a little bit about Ty Green. Boy, would the it, he's been very productive for you here and terrific start to this season. Talk about beard and product Ty Green. Well, Ty, first of all, he's a he's a real tough kid. He's a very competitive kid. Um, he. He's one of those guys, he spends a lot of time in the gym. He's a gym rat type of kid. He, he's he's going to work on his game. He brings a tremendous amount of focus to, to what he can do. And, uh, and so his attitude is conducive to success, obviously. And, um, you know, and that's, that's, that's really got a lot to do with what, how he produces. Um, he can shoot it with range. Obviously, that helps anybody. Um, he's getting better driving the ball and playing in between. Uh, he's, he's improved in a variety of facets, just like you would expect a young man who comes in at this level and works, has the work capacity that he has. So all those things lead uh, to improvement, and um, and he believes he can do it. You know, he he's, he's a confident young man, so he's not a cocky kid, but he's very confident and, as I said, very competitive. Coach, is it safe to say that he's going to have a little bit of a an extra chip on his shoulder or desire to, to play well heading into this game this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that I would call it a chip because he brings he brings that competitive edge all the time. But he's obviously going to be excited about playing against the University of Tennessee. He's a huge Tennessee fan, big fan uh, in all sports, and so I think there's a, a great deal of excitement. So if, you know, if he takes a couple bad shots or something like that because he's too hyped. I'll have to overlook it for a while anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what kind of contingent, what kind of uh, group is going to go out and, uh, and see him on Saturday? I, I know it's going to be a pretty good large group, though. I mean, I don't know too much about the specifics, but I know there's a lot of people in that town and, uh, in, in the, from Beard and the, that have uh, respect him and his family a great deal, so I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people there. We're visiting with Eddie Payne. He's the head coach at USC Upstate, the next opponent for Tennessee, Saturday night, Thompson Bowling Arena. Coach, talk about your start to your season. Got a win at Virginia Tech. Just give us your thoughts on on your team's performance in that win against Virginia Tech. Well, you know, we played well in the game, obviously. Virginia Tech uh, is an opener, so when you play openers, neither team's overly familiar with the other team. Um, But... uh, I thought we executed well. We did a really good job of keeping them off the glass, second shot uh, opportunities and second shot points. Uh, didn't turn the ball over down the stretch. And, you know, did some really good things in a tight game to win. And then last night we didn't do as good a job in those areas, and we lost a game on the road. We had cut it to three, had the ball late after being down 11 um, against Winthrop on the road. But, it was kind of a new experience for our program in terms of we trying to grow this program after going Division One and going through the pains of playing, uh, making that transition. And I would say, yes, last night was the first time we kind of came into somebody, uh, into a game where we had a little bit of a target on our back in, in the sense that, hey, we beat a, an ACC team on the road. We're going to be jacked up to play against them, and that's kind of what happened last night. So that's a different position uh, for us to be in. And, uh, so we, you know, there's some learning uh, curves, uh, have to take place in that regard. Coach, people who aren't familiar with your team are, are going to get a good chance to see a guy who, who's making some noise and has been, you know, since he's been with you guys, Tori, Craig, you know, your guard, he's averaging 22 points a game, 8.5 rebounds and in, in through two. You know, he's, he's done, he's done, been a pretty good player for, for multiple years. I guess what can people expect out of him and, 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 you know, what, how would you describe the kind of player that he is? Well, he has. He's been Rookie of the Year, Player of the Year. Uh, he's three-year averages, and every year it's been about the same, right at 17 points and eight rebounds. So he's been a consistent producer for us. Um, and he's gotten off to that kind of start again this year. I think probably the thing he can do uh, that attracts a lot of NBA scouts is the fact that he can shoot the ball with a great deal of range, uh, and he does it does it consistently and does it well. So 
that would be the thing. He's long. He's about six six. He's got long arms. He comes from a very 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 small town in South Carolina, a one A program wow. um, that had had a lot of success. But you know, he was very much under the radar and played in the AAU, and they stuck him in the post. And you know, we kind of got lucky in a lot of those ways because people weren't able to see what he could do, <clears throat> and. Um, and obviously, he can play face in the basket because he can because he can score the ball from deep. We're visiting with Eddie Payne, USC Upstate head coach, Tennessee's next opponent on Saturday. Coach, your roster is pretty interesting. You have guys from a lot of different states, and you also have a kid from Germany and a kid from Senegal. Talk about the makeup of your roster. Well, you know, I've been doing this what this is thirty nine years. So I've, over the course of time, I've had a lot of players from Greek and Ser- Greece and Serbia and Germany and. Australia and different places. So, um, we've always had somewhat of an international flair. And I think when you're at this level, that being the mid level, mid division one level, you can sometimes get some kids from, uh, across the pond, so to speak, that you might not be able to get if they played in America. So we've always tried to keep our, our, uh, eyes out for players like that. And then, you know, for the most part after that, we have a lot of, um, uh, Southeast kids, a lot of Georgia kids. Um, I'm from North Carolina. I played at Wake Forest. I mean, I have a lot of years coaching in North Carolina, but we don't recruit North Carolina because they got like 27 Division One, <laughs> four years colleges. Uh, so we it tend to go south a little bit more and, and, and recruit the Southeast. Coach, have you had a chance? To, did you get a chance to watch uh, Tennessee's season opener? And if, if so, what did you take out of out of that game when you when you broke it down? Well, you know, I, I've watched uh, Coach Martin's teams in the past, and they're really tough and physical, very good defensive team. And it looks to me that they're like that again. They have really strong low-post players. Um, they're going to guard you. They're going to be physical. Um, you know, you got to keep them off the glass. And they're very consistent in those in those areas, so uh, uh, relentless on the glass and, and just tough. So, you know, obviously – um, to beat them, you have to really be tough yourself and compete very hard. So, you know, I'm very impressed with Tennessee, and uh, I think he's, he's he's created an identity for his teams that has been producing results. Coach, what do you think of this new emphasis on calling the fouls that has generated so much discussion this season? Personally, I think it's good and I think it's needed because I think our game has kind of gotten into a slugfest type of thing in terms of, you know, you're talking about freedom of movement off the ball, being able to cut somewhere without somebody, you know, essentially pass blocking you. Um, I think it had gone too far. And um, interestingly enough, our couple scrimmages in our first game of Virginia Tech were called with the, in that vein, and uh, players adjusted. Last night, our game was called kind of like last year. Um, they didn't call a lot of hand checks, and it got uh, got pretty physical. And um, and so I I personally think it's good. I know some coaches don't like it, but I think. Uh, you got to move your feet, play defense with your feet instead of being physical and jamming people and chucking them all the time. Is that going to be the most frustrating aspect, is the consistency of it, one, and two, will they continue to emphasize it as the season goes on? Well, you hit it right on the head. Last night, our players got confused, and then I got confused. And I got a technical. I haven't had a technical in three years, and uh, – and my, my basic point was we spend all this time in the preseason talking about this and you're, you're not going to call these things. And of course that guy, he didn't particularly want to hear that. So, uh, he gave me a technical. I didn't curse him or anything. I, but, but I did express that point of view. So the consistency is a, cute, a huge thing, as you point out. And then whether or not they continue to referee it like that obviously remains to be seen. The, the message, the strong message we got from our supervisors, officials, and through John Adams in the NCAA office was that this is the way it's going to be called. This is what you've got to you've got to call this to make the NCAA tournament. So therefore, we you know we we want that to continue. And so 
we'll have to wait and see. But, uh, you know, the, the pressures from the television uh, network, starting times, getting pushed back because the first game's gone long into the second game, and I, those kinds of things, I, I don't know. Those tend to be uh, political and, and monetary discussions, I guess, among those people. But um, I, personally, I think it's good, and I hope they continue to try to do it. If they achieve that freedom of movement that would be better for the game, does it favor or give an advantage to specific types of teams or programs? Well, probably in the well, I guess you could say probably in the sense if you have really good perimeter players who slash and and get to the basket, and then but the same thing applies if you have a good low post game. You're not supposed to be able to put two hands in somebody's back. If you do that, it's supposed to be an automatic whistle. Um, so I would think it would have certain – the offense obviously gains an advantage in all these things. And getting more offense into the game is not necessarily a bad thing. Excuse me, I just sneezed. Um, That's right. But, I, you know, I, I, I don't know certain types of teams. I just think it's going to favor the offensive teams. Coach, talk better about – Better offensive teams. I'm sorry, Coach. Talk about your league. There's East Tennessee State, which a lot of East Tennessee uh, listeners here in Knoxville are familiar with. Florida Gulf Coast, who made that unbelievable run in the NCAA tournament. Talk about your league this year, because you guys are right up there as uh, one of uh, one of the favorites or top three or four in the league. Well, our league's been real good for the last several years, and it was even better when Belmont was in it. They, they moved two years ago. But our power ranking, for example, has been the best of the mid-major conferences around the country has been right at the top. It's been the best in the Southeast. And so people, we're, but we're under-publicized. I mean, I, I would venture to say a lot of people in Knoxville don't know a lot about this league. They might know because East Tennessee's in it, but uh, in terms, in generally terms, we don't, we're not as well recognized as, uh, say, the Southern Conference. Coach, you mentioned the, going through the growing pains of changing divisions and things like that. The win over Virginia Tech, I know the first in eight games against an ACC school. Does that give your team confidence coming into a game, you know, against Tennessee at Knoxville, another you know bigger, another bigger school? Do you do you look back and say, hey, you, look what we did here. We can do that anywhere. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that really helped our our kids' confidence. And uh, you know, and like I said, I'm not sure uh, the circumstances in life. Nice game. What it did is put a bullseye on you a little bit. But but it does uh, it is something that has meaning in terms of uh, the general public, the publicity, the way people see you, um, see your program, and how they prepare for it, and those types of things. So uh, and then of course Florida Gulf Coast run last year did did that as well, uh, not just for Florida Gulf Coast but for all the teams in our league. So uh, that's one of the great things about NCAA basketball, particularly tournament basketball. Is, Things like that can happen and often do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the few sports where, you know, the, 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 the lesser teams can make a little bit of noise on their way, uh, once tournament time rolls around.